What if you developed a new belief? What if your new belief is life is always happening for me instead of to me? Because what we're going to talk about this morning a little bit this afternoon here is the story of your life for many of you is a trap. Because the human mind tends to look for things that are the most painful because it wants to avoid it, and so we tend to remember that. You know, there's a difference between what we call the remembering self and the experiencing self. A Nobel Prize winner made this distinction. You go to a concert, let's say it's a classical music concert, that may not be your style, it isn't mine personally, but I can appreciate it, and you're in it, and it's just gorgeous, and the musicians are amazing, and everything is in unison, and then somebody drops something, bam, 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 crash, and it just jolts everybody for a moment. But then the music comes back in and you drop back in and your experience of the full two hours was gorgeous. But your memory will be that fucking person who dropped that thing and jolted everybody. That's the way the mind works, not the heart, the mind. You have to learn to discipline and direct your mind. Because otherwise, your experience of life is gonna be modified because we tend to look at what's wrong more instead of what's right. These thoughts that we have, we think they're our thoughts, so it makes it really hard to change them. When people meditate and try to not think thoughts, show me somebody who's done that successfully, consistently. They're full of shit. Right? Everybody, the mind thinks thoughts. But here's the distinction. If I told you 100 years ago, we we're going to fly to the moon and back, you would have called me a lunatic. That's where the term comes from. And people still use it, and it doesn't make any sense, because a lunatic is somebody who thought we'd go to the moon and back, and we've done it, right? <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, that's, that's where it comes from. That's, that's where it comes from. But if I would have told you 100 years ago that there's going to be a box in your pocket, and you're going to pull this thing out. You're going to hit a couple buttons, and then it's going to capture invisible waves that are drifting around the Earth and bring the waves in, and you're going to see somebody on the other side of the Earth, and you're going to talk to them. You're totally nuts. Thoughts are those invisible waves. And when you use your body in a certain way, if I sit like this, I'm going to channel. A, I'm going to tap into a different channel of those waves than if I'm sitting like this. Kind of like a TV set. If I turn one channel, might be a comedy channel, I'm gonna see a lot of laughter. Turn another one, it's a horror channel. Turn another channel, it's a romance channel. This is what changes which of those waves you touch in. So if you can start to realize that your thoughts, that you think are your thoughts, there's nothing unique about your thoughts. They've been around for thousands of years. You're just tapping into them because of what you're doing with your body that makes you either fearful or passionate or courageous or whatever you're feeling. As you go in those states, you get different thoughts. So what I want people to see is that, learn how to just see those thoughts go by. Learn how to be entertained by those thoughts. Because I have crazy thoughts, and, but what I've gotten good at is going, look at that crazy thought. That's not me, that's the mind. Not your mind, because if it's you, how do you change you? Pretty hard. But I really, truly know, there's. I haven't heard a thought come out of you that's original. <laughs> You've called them your thoughts, but they're not. You've stolen them. They've been around forever. When you see that, it's easier to let go of them. And letting go of those thoughts is one of the ways that you free yourself. And again, the more you do it, just like a muscle, you get better and better and better. And all of a sudden, the shit that used to make you crazy or stressed out, or like, how many things you'd be worried about that never came to be? And some people, their life is good, so they worry about other people. (laughs) So so they're, they're never not worried, right? So it's really just a pattern. If you want wealth, real wealth is not just money, it's emotion. It's like, what are we really after in money? You don't want money, you don't want pieces of paper with the pictures of deceased notables on it. You want what you think money will give you. You think it will give you freedom or security or stability or love. It won't give you love. It'll get you sex. It won't get you love. Money won't, right? So really what you're after is the emotion. And so what I want people to get is the emotion they want now. And all it is is a new habit. It's learning to discipline this mind, right? By realizing the mind thoughts are out there and letting them float by and constantly coming back to what can I love about this? What can I appreciate? It's like, if you can learn to love or at least appreciate, start to enjoy the things that you used to get upset about, how much freedom would you have? How much more joy would you have? And I know people who got billions of dollars, I've coached them, who was like, holy shit, they live in scarcity all the time. One man, I'll, I'll never forget, he's screaming at his wife, I'm in the media, I'm in, I'm in the house, and he's screaming at his wife because she spent some money on a bunch of outfits and stuff like that. And he's a multi-billionaire, he couldn't spend all his money in his lifetime, and then he's totally upset at his daughter who's in her 20s who spent some money too, and I'm like, I pulled him aside afterwards and I said, what do you do this for? And what do you do it for? And he's like, well, it's just it's the principal thing. I said, no, the principal thing is do you love these people, and do you want them to have an abundant life, when you have, there's, you don't have one loss, but you live like you're poor, you know? And it's like, I finally got through to them. But so many people, that's why I say money doesn't change you. 
money magnifies who you are. So you want to expand the depth of who you are and free yourself from suffering by just knowing it's a pattern of thought and you can change the pattern of thought. Now you can try and pretend you've lost something. You can like be upset with somebody and they go, oh my God, I lost their love or, or they lost mine or I've lost respect. How do you lose respect? You can't lose something that's already inside of you. See, the problem is people are, you know, looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> love is not something you have to go looking for when it's where you come from. A friend of mine said that, Michael Hadley. Thought, wow, what a great thing to remember. Love is not something you have to go looking for when it's where you come from. So you can't lose something. Everything you thought you'd lose is already inside of you. See, if you won't feel respect, it's because you aren't choosing to focus on being respected. You're not communicating to yourself. You should be respected. What if I said something to you? I said it in a way that made you feel disrespected. It made you feel disrespected or you took what I said, managed to interpret it, represent to yourself and communicate to yourself that my saying it in that tone of voice means I don't respect you, therefore you can't have these feelings. Does that make any sense? Now, do we do it all the time? Yes. Do we want to continue to do it? No. Okay. We want to change that. You can't ever lose anything. Now you can perceive you've lost something. By the way, do some people who've not lost a limb, not lost their eyesight, not lost anything, feel like they've lost over little stupid things, yes or no? Some people feel lost about something they never even had in the first place. Like they have this goal and it didn't happen. And then they go, shh, I lost my goal. You never had it. Oh, they have this expectation. Most upsets are about expectations that aren't met. Isn't that true? You expect somebody to do something. You expected yourself to do something. You expected life to do something. You expected the weather to be a certain way and it didn't happen. You go, oh, I lost out. How could you lose out on something you never had? You must have been very confused. So you can't lose. But if you want to feel bad, what you have to do is have the illusion of loss. Create the illusion of loss. That's all you have to do to feel bad. I'll guide you on how to feel bad. Step one, feel bad. Create the illusion of loss. I want you to make sure you take notes. The next time you want to feel bad, you know what to do. Okay. Now, after the illusion of loss, what that usually does is that creates a second major emotion in the anatomy of human emotion, and that is feeling of hurt. Feel hurt. And usually what happens is people don't notice the loss thing. They notice they feel hurt. If they're sensitive. Because this stuff happens pretty fast, doesn't it? And we've forgotten it's loss. All we know is we feel hurt. Anytime somebody feels hurt, what it really is, they have a sense of loss about something. They lost out on their expectation, they lost out on what they thought they had, they think they've lost out on something else, they think they're missing out, they think something has changed, they think they're losing something, and they feel bad, they feel hurt. How many of you have felt hurt in a personal relationship? Great. Tell me, raise your hand and tell me, what did you feel hurt about? Give me an example. Yes, sir. You felt hurt about dishonesty, meaning you felt this person had been dishonest with you. Now, are we absolutely certain that this person was dishonest, that he felt that was dishonest? Yes or no? Is it possible this person was not dishonest, but rather he interpreted their behavior as dishonest? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. I had a conversation with my mom not long ago. I couldn't even believe it. She was like all hurt. She said, I'm really, and she, was, she went to the next level. I might as well tell you what it is. Most people, by the way, don't stay in hurt. They manage to immediately amp up into anger. Is that true? That's right. And that's the third emotion. So if you're angry, what you really are is what? Hurt, which means you really just have a sense of what? That's really it. So my mom was upset. I was like, what are you upset with me about? I mean, what do I do? She goes, well, she uh, does flowers for seminars. And she asked me if I would contact this hotel and have the hotel like use her services. And I said, I'd be willing to, but I don't think they do that. And they never do it for us. Well, she talked to somebody else and that somebody else told her that the hotel does it all the time and they contract with somebody else so your son must not really care about you. Now, she was also in a very stressful state. Does the state we're in and just our normal life affect the way we interpret meaning? Yeah, she was stressed about a bunch of other things. So while she's in a stressful state, somebody said this to her and she went, oh, my son, he just thinks I'm a pain in the butt. He just, uh, he just, he just wants to get rid of me. He must be ashamed of my work. He must not like my flowers. She, went, uh, she created all this wonderful stuff. Can we create all kinds of shit in our head? How many are good at creating shit in your head? <laughs> okay. right. Good. I am too. We all are. I'm not picking on my mom, trust me. Oh boy, it's on video. Now I'm really in deep shit. <laughs>
She taught me everything I know. She did teach me a good deal of what I know. Gave me a great foundation for my life. Point is, though, seriously, is she's all upset. And she thought that I had lied to her. Now, first of all, when she said she lied, I had lied to her, what do you think happened to me? Like, me, honesty is one of my highest values. I'm probably too honest. I tell people everything. I, what? I, the fact that she questioned my honesty. How many of you, somebody questioned your honesty and you know you're honest? I mean, that really upsets you. What do you think I got when she said that? Angry. How could you say that? And plus, I just did all these things for you. <laughs> And I started remembering all the stuff I was doing for her. And I said, I have never lied to you in my life. Well, maybe when I was a little kid, but not since then. I said, what are you talking? I can't even believe that. Why was I angry? Because I felt what by her statement? And I felt hurt because I had a sense of what? Loss. And my loss was, how could we lose that connection and knowing who each other are? By my own mom. I mean, do anything for her. I just got done doing this unique thing for her that, I mean, blew her out of her shorts. She didn't ever expect it. I blew her out of her shorts. Interesting picture. <laughs> <laughs> and so you know what happened though is I realized that if I responded to her in a state of anger will that probably work no it didn't work so I realized I need to change my state and I asked myself a question that helped me a lot the question I ask is what's probably going on with her that makes her treat me this way or treat people this way or respond this way instead of how dare she why how can she treat me this way after I've done so much for her which would do what? Make you more what? Upset. Different question I asked her, well, what's going on with her that's making her respond this way? What's she stressed about? And I asked her and she told me, she apologized and just dropped right away. I'm here to tell you a belief I want you to remember for the rest of your life that if all you do is remember this out of the whole week and really remember it at the right times, it'll change the way you communicate with other human beings. And the belief is this, then in any communication with another human being where you get a response from someone, in any communication, with another human being and you get a response from someone that response is either a loving response or a cry for help in any communication that you have with another human being they give you some kind of response they respond to you in some way and that communication is either a loving response or a cry for help that's it those are the only two kinds of responses Life is the same. The enemy is not always clear in life. It can be hard to tell who's going to try and bring you down. And that's going to focus all of your energy into that. And you're going to become a master and an expert in that. And from this will come a lot of your financial success. From this also will come a lot of fulfillment and a lot of satisfaction. Because fulfillment comes from being good at something. You're not going to be fulfilled at life by just dabbling in a bunch of little stupid things. Or working a, a job that you're not really excited about. You need to position yourself as an artist in life. What's your art form? you got to find what that is. If you have some nascent passions, you know, some passions that are still kind of like just starting to bud, go and... Um, Nurture those and just see where they, they take you. If you're interested in art, go do some art. If you're interested in music, go play some music. If you're interested in um, uh, starting a business, go maybe try starting a business and just see where that takes you. You might discover like, oh, I really love this. Or no, you know, I thought I loved it, but I actually kind of hate it. And those are very valuable insights for you to have. You go downstairs or you go to the gym and that's the trigger. You woke up, you do these actions. Nothing interrupts those actions, that's the action. And you have to have those set up. One of my other favorite trigger moments to set up is door frame triggers. What do you mean by that? When you walk into a new room, to have a psychological trigger go off in your mind that you've associated with that door frame. So let me give you an example. If I walk into my house, at night, if I've been working all day and I'm going to walk in, I'm going to see my lady. I have it so when I ever walk through the doors of my house, three words repeat off immediately in my mind because I've done it so many times consciously. I went to the door, I said the three words, said the three words, said the three words, and I did this so many times that now when I walk through a door, my mind automatically triggers those three words and I remember to be those three words. So what words would you love to have 
describe you as a person, that you would be happy if that was how people described you, what would those words be? If you're not capable, I think what might be holding this individual back, there's two things. Number one is, I feel like I should take extreme ownership of everything. Mm. I feel like I should just do everything myself. That is not what extreme ownership is. Extreme ownership isn't doing everything yourself. And also, what can come into play is your ego, because you don't want to ask people for help. And that's not a good sign. Because at the end of the day, we all want to know that we matter. So if you do business with people that make you feel good, you want to do more business with them. And so it's a really, really simple thing. I call it my philosophy about human beings is just be a fan. Just cheer for everybody. There's so much success to go around. People have really difficult lives. They make things really hard for themselves. Make their life easy. Make them feel great. Give them a hug, smile, compliment them. Be generous. Don't be a pain in the ass. Like literally, it's that simple.